everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Dana, AKA Blondie Knots here on YouTube. And we are doing another studio vlog this week, two in a row. Who are we? I actually initially had something completely different planned for us this week, but I need a little more time for mental preparation to make that happen. So give me some time on that. But in the meantime, I had so much fun stuff I feel like I wanted to share with you this week. And I thought, what well, better way to do that than in a studio vlog? Let me go over some of the things I definitely know we'll get to this week. And then a couple things I hope we'll get to. We have two packages I hope coming this week that I would love to be able to show you. One of them is like a yarn cake stand thing. I don't know. It's from a small business I follow over on Instagram and I will link them here for you and in the description in case you're interested. But my husband ordered it for me for my birthday and it was like a six week wait for it to come. So it said it shipped last week and it's coming from across the pond. So hopefully this week it'll be here and I can show that to you because I've been waiting for it and I just really can't wait to have it in my room. Guys, excuse the lighting, but I am currently editing this vlog and this showed up. I thought I'd open it with you really quickly so we can just check it out together. So this is, this means it's blue, which is so exciting. All right. And you open it and it looks like this inside. Super cute packaging. I just couldn't, I could not wait any longer. I had to open it with you guys. And let's see. Uh, so there is some assembly required, but ooh, I'll just show you this piece really quick. This is like the main cake part. You can see it's really cute. And then in here, I believe you can put like stitch markers, your darning needle, whatever you need in there. It's just like a quick little assembly, I think. So let me assemble this really, really fast. And then I will show you what it looks like. I'm so excited. I can't wait. Hold on one sec. Okay, we have it assembled. Here is what it looks like from the top. And then this is the side here. I'll have to give you my updated thoughts in a couple weeks after using this, but it does spin like that. See, it's popping up a little bit, which I don't know if it's supposed to do, but it's okay. And you just slide your yarn over it like this, and then you can just pull it from where it's at and it'll spin with you, which is super cool and very convenient for me, uh, just keeping cat hair out of my yarn. But in a couple weeks, maybe I will let you know my updated opinions on this because it is like $50. So before you go spend your money, let me tell you what I think of it. But initial thoughts, it's super cute. I mean, it's a cake yarn spinner. Yarn spinner is what it's called. Okay, just had to share that with you really quick. Back to the video. And next thing I'm hoping we'll get this week is I am expecting a pretty special delivery of um, hopefully a little bit of some vintage knitting, crochet items, things, we'll see. I don't actually know exactly what's gonna be in the box, um, but I will explain that more when it gets here, if it gets here in this week's video. Otherwise, I will update you on both of those things later. But the things I know we're going to get to for sure this week is I am working up another test pattern, another amigurumi, who am I? I have been doing quite a bit of amigurumi lately, which is so unlike me. I went to Michael's yesterday because it was my day off of filming, and so I did some perusing and shopping, and of course I ended up bringing home some stuff, so I'd love to share that with you. I thought I'd give you like a little update since last video I did show you where I was at with my tank top. I'll give you an update on that, and I'm also hoping that this video will hold me accountable to definitely get that tank top finished in this vlog. Because I'm using a three millimeter hook, it's definitely taking me a while, but I'd like to have it done sooner rather than later. When you're saying this, it's September 2nd, so it's fall time. And even though this is a tank top, I do have some fun ways. I'm gonna layer it and kind of make it a fall hybrid. So I'm really excited to just have it done and be able to layer it and look cutesy for the fall, even though it's still 90 degrees out today. So without further ado, I'm gonna show you my tank top that I'm making first and then I'll show you the pattern test because you're not even going to be able to stand it, how cute it is. Oh, and I need to show you my Michaels haul. Some of this stuff, well, actually everything I bought from Michaels will be used for 
our pumpkin video coming up as well where we see how many pumpkins I can make in a day. I'm gonna make some pumpkin stacks and I'll walk through doing that with you. Then I'll also give you guys the patterns that I'll be using for my pumpkins. I, um, I had a couple people ask me to do that, so I'll definitely share those once I gather them. I haven't thought that far in advance yet, but I will make sure to share those with you for sure so we can work on them at the same time together in that video. That'd be pretty fun. Okay, let me grab the tank top so I can update you there and then we'll do a Michaels haul and I'll show you the pattern test. Okay, I am in fact playing a little bit of a dangerous game with this piece because I haven't really been trying it on and checking it out as I go, but I think it's honestly gonna be fine. I'm not worried about it. So when I showed you last, I barely had any of it done, but here's where I am with it now. So I have the whole entire front panel is completed and I am working on this back piece here. Very interesting construction for a tank top, but I'm actually thinking this could this could be my new like go-to basic for tank tops. I feel like this is gonna work up really nicely. I love the close stitching because I use a three millimeter. It will obviously pay off once I'm done. But yeah, I'm just gonna keep working on this. And like I said, I'm really hoping to, sorry, I'm looking in the viewfinder. I'm really hoping to get this done with you this week. I think this is a nice color for transitional summer autumn piece, so. That's that. Working up with that, still loving the Queensland cotton yarn. It's absolutely incredible. Nothing but good things to say about it. But again, I'm going to make a more detailed video of my pieces that I made out of my Queensland cotton. Like I wanted to do just a whole separate video for wearable pieces coming up since I do, like I said, have a couple wearables I do need to make for work related purposes. Next, let me show you my little haul from Michaels. So here we are, the lady said I needed the big bag because um, she didn't want to squish my florals, which was really sweet, but uh, it's a little bit unnecessary in size, a little, um, how you say, deceiving. It's deceiving. So, okay, hear me out for this vision. I thought it would be fun to, along with my regular pumpkins I'm gonna be doing, and by the way, thank you so much for all the advice on keeping the gray yarn from my last little pumpkin yarn haul. All of my friends who love grays, love the goth, love the whole like really traditional Halloween vibe, I needed you to tell me to keep that. So thank you so much. I'm also thinking of making those gray ones like bobble stitch pumpkins. So the bobbles will be like either black or purple. I think that'd be really neat. But I wanna do some pumpkin stacks. I don't really know what they're called, but kind of this is my inspo idea. And basically, I will walk you through this, like I said, once we start making pumpkins. I've never made a pumpkin snack, but I can't imagine it'll be that difficult to do. I need some fun things to shove in between the pumpkins, basically, where they meet. So Michaels was having a big sale on all their like Halloween stuff and whatnot, so I got this piece. This is basically just black glittery eucalyptus, and I thought it would be really fun to cut some of these pieces off and shove them in there. I wanna really play into the gothy Halloween real traditional style for some of them and then the other ones will be more of an autumny fall look so anyway basically what I'm saying is I bought some black eucalyptus for this this was on sale for three dollars and fifty cents and I thought that was pretty decent I do still wish like a lot of the stuff was a little bit cheaper but I think that considering I can cut this up quite a bit to fit in a lot of pumpkins like I think that'll be totally fine I bought this really cute little bundle of stuff and these two I can completely separate and shove in between pumpkins. We got this fun little skull for one. I thought, you know, why not? Got these really cute little maybe spider things in here. And we have, let's see, these here, whatever these are supposed to be. But anyways, yeah, the roses are gorgeous with the purple. I thought that was just spectacular. So I'm going to really give that my best shot this year and see how it goes. I'll also maybe if these don't sell, just list them on Etsy or something and just see how that goes. I'm really just excited to just do some different stuff. I also really love adding elements into my crochet that are not crochet, if that makes sense. So it just gives a lot of different texture and I feel like that makes it look one, more expensive and two, just a little more creative. I don't know, but we'll walk through all that in a couple weeks. I just wanted to kind of give you a little heads up that this is kind of a plan I'm thinking about doing for some of my more gothic traditional Halloween style pumpkins. 
cut. So then to be in full contrast of the real Halloween style pumpkin stacks, I plan on doing very fall pumpkin stacks. Could pass for Halloween, but could also stay up on your tables till Thanksgiving. It could make it all the way until you decorate for Christmas. So I feel like the longevity can also be a really good selling point that people can have them through the entire season of autumn. So that was kind of my thought here. All of these were on sale for 99 cents. And so I could not pass it up because I will be able to completely separate all of these to stuff in between the pumpkins again. So I got three colors in these. They're called foxtails, I guess. So I got red, yellow, and orange foxtails. I'm sure if you went to your local Michaels, you could find these as well. Or honestly, I would check Dollar Tree. Even though Dollar Tree is $1.25 now, you might be able to find some... <laughs> Sorry, I'm allergic to the flowers. You might be able to find some good stuff there. But yeah, got three of these for three bucks. Love me some of that. Then I also found this little set of flowers and this was also on sale for 99 cents. It's just called Bush. Okay, obviously we can pull these apart and there's a lot of stems here. How many we have? Seven, seven stems in this one little thing. So I thought that would be so cute. And then the last piece to kind of add into that is I found this giant thing of garland. So this was on sale for $6.99. Full price, it is $15. Take that with a grain of salt. I don't know that this would ever be priced at full price. I think they do that just for the sale. But I want to pluck off some of these leaves and then also stick them into the pumpkin stacks. And then I figured I could repurpose the rest to kind of decorate this back area over here so we can have a fall Halloween decor backdrop for the holidays. I'd love to switch it up a little bit and just kind of have some fun with you guys for the month of October and then we'll do it again for Christmas. But I thought I could definitely reuse these for that. And I thought if I need some leaves in my black pumpkin stacks, maybe I could try spray painting some of these. That could be a stretch and I know that, but I have enough where I can sacrifice a couple to the aerosol can, okay? So we'll see what happens. But I figure there's many purposes I could use for this and you know, for each individual leaf, it doesn't barely cost me anything. So the cost added to the pumpkin stack will be much lower with this. Also, I went and looked at some of just the regular leaf picks you can get in their floral pick area and a lot of them were like $8.99 for the same leaves but less just because they're in a pick instead of in a garland form so this really was the most bang for your buck even these cuties you could put these leaves in your regular singular pumpkins so that's also an idea you could run wild with this really but I just wanted to kind of go over my thoughts and why I purchased everything at Michael's my total after everything came to $26 so that was pretty good I'm pretty happy with that not gonna lie so without further ado let me show you the cutest Halloween pattern I think I will see all season this year truly really an incredible pattern I'm so impressed with this designer I'm gonna pop her name here I just found her on Instagram through this post it came up on my explore page and I was like oh my god absolutely fantastic 10 out of 10 so okay enough of me hyping it up let me show you Hold on to your seats because you're not going to be able to handle this. I know. Take it in. Wow. How? Who? Let this be so cute. Take a minute for the boots, the stockings, the pants. The pants are my husband's favorite part. I think my favorite part is literally this ruffle collar. Like, get out of here with that. Look at the eyes we have on him. Oh my goodness. I am so proud of myself for this because I yearned under for this whole piece. And this is about, I mean, you can tell he's, I believe, 29 inches long, the pattern says. I'm definitely getting in the hang of yarning under a lot more than I was before. He will absolutely be in our background for our Halloween video. So don't think this is the last time you see him. Now we will be making another one. And I'm also going to add to this one. I want to add some overall straps and some buttons. So I'm going to do that and show you guys what that looks like. And then let me know if you like that better or you'll like him like this. We'll do a comparison after. But the next one I'm gonna make is, do you wanna tell him? 
He's a little shy. The next one I'm going to make is going to be a vintage Halloween inspired pumpkin man because my aesthetic for Halloween has always been and will always be, I feel like, a vintage Halloween. Here are some of my inspirations that I'm working with for this. We're really just going to try to hone in on that really vintagey, old looking style of Halloween. So I really hope you guys are excited to go along for that little journey with me. I think I have just enough orange yarn left to complete him. We'll be playing yarn chicken a little bit, but then the other colors I'm gonna just be using are just gonna be black and white and that's it. I don't wanna add too much color to him. I just wanna keep him very classic. I think that I'm gonna take a break from my wearable piece because I have been working on that actually all morning off camera. Also working on creating my own Halloween pattern. So hopefully me telling you will hold me accountable for that, okay? And I hope to release that within the next week from when you're seeing this video. I'll keep you updated, but it's a tapestry piece. You and I, friend, are gonna head downstairs. We're gonna get working on our second pumpkin man. Sorry for the very long intro, like I said, I just have had a lot to share with you since Saturday. I'm gonna collect all my things. I'm gonna go downstairs, get started on him, and I hope you'll join me for that. So let's go along for the week. And most importantly, I almost forgot to thank this week's cup of coffee donation. So this week, someone, anonymous name, sneaky sneaky, someone donated to me and said, just here to support a crochet girly. And while I have no idea who you are, I wanted to say thank you so much. It means so much to me. Again, when you guys choose to support me and help my channel, it means the world to me. So liking, subscribing, sharing, donating coffee, is just an incredible form of support and I appreciate you for all and any of the support that you give to me and my channel. It goes a long way. So thank you someone. I just wanted to make sure to thank you in today's video. So okay, now we can actually get on with our week and let's see how much of our pumpkin friend we can get done. He's gonna do the transition. honest with me is he cute with the overalls or was he cuter before because it's kind of hard for me to tell I didn't weave in any ends because I am afraid to do so before I make my final decision but I did do like a little crisscross moment in the back so if you can imagine all these gone just a cute little crisscross and I just like the buttons I don't know I'll have to ask my testing group on Instagram I'm gonna message them and see what they say about it and ask my husband and then I'll let you know what the final verdict is on the buttons. But right now I'm gonna start the vintage classic one. So I'm really excited to work that up with you. So, okay, let's go. <laughs> oh boy, friends, we could have an issue on our hands. Um, while working the hands here. We have been in a dangerous battle of yarn chicken, okay? That's just the fact of the matter. I'm not going to go buy another ball of orange Bernat yarn because I never use it anyway. This is from my octopus I made a couple months ago and luckily these pumpkins just needed orange. So I do not want another ball of orange yarn, but here's our situation. I still have like a couple rounds of this first hand I need to get done, but some of it will kind of be covered by this cuff thing we're making. So I'm not too concerned of it past this point, right? Like I think I could get away with putting black next to it and that will work. But this is all I have left to do another hand, um, which is a very, very small amount. And I'm, I'm scared. I even went into my yarn trash <laughs> and grab this extra bit because I'm like, this is pure gold at this point. So what I'm gonna do is just start this other hand and hope and pray it's enough. The second closest color I have is rust, which when you look at it like this, actually it's coming up really brown on camera, but it's very like terracotta orange. Um, but obviously next to this, it's not that close at all. So I'm nervous. I'm, I'm getting a little bit stressed out because I just need to get these hands done and it'll be fine. But 
it's just like, will we get them done? You know? So that's where we are. Join me for this very intense game of yarn chicken. Let's see if we can't finish this handoff at least to this point, like I said, I would be happy with this. I'll, I'll keep it at that, but I'm just gonna work from the other end of this very sad strand. I don't think this is gonna be enough. Mm. Here goes nothing. Not even close. Embarrassingly off. That's how far off it was. So I frogged everything. Um, this is all I have to work with, which is like so annoying. I just need a little bit more. I'm going to think about it a little bit. I'm going to probably try sizing down a hook size and see if I can't make the hands that way and just have a little bit smaller hands. So that's probably my next plan of attack. I'll let you know how that goes. Uh, I really just wanted that to just be enough. And I really like, I'm dead set on these hands being orange. I really don't want to change the color of them. So Okay, let's see. 6.5 millimeter hook off by six stitches and then also using that rust. Back to the drawing board, still have to figure something out. I'm gonna try one other thing. And if not, I'm gonna put this away for the rest of the day. <laughs> so, okay, this is the reality of it though. Like sometimes things just don't go your way, but we will figure it out. We are smart, we'll figure this out one way or another. just took entirely too long, but he's done and I am obsessed with him. Besides, of course, the, the white glove hands, I still am not quite over it yet, but I know it's fine and he still looks really cute, I think. But if you look up close, you can tell I put these little sparkly pom-poms on him. My original plan was to do some in orange, but they didn't have orange. I didn't really want to do white, so I just have these little black sparkly bits. And then I put them on the top of his shoes too. I don't know, I thought that was kind of cute. Oh, and I did do a cinnamon stick as his stem instead of the pattern stem, which looks like this. I just wanted to try something a little bit different, you know? I love them both equally. They're just very different, so it's really fun to have them next to each other. Please let me know in the comments what you think about him. It's so good to have this all finished and I will catch you bright and early tomorrow morning. Now, but one second after I just ended that clip, my doorbell rang and there was a package for me. So this is going to be our vintage, hopefully, um, crochet or knit gear. I don't even really know what's in this. I'm scooting this down so you can see the box when I open it. Basically, my uncle sent this to me. You guys may or may not know, I can't remember if I shared this a while ago in my vlogs, um, but my grandma passed away this year who is the person who got me into crocheting. A lot of people ask me why I started crocheting or why I wanted to get into it. And a lot of it is because I have always been into yarn. Like even as a kid, I wanted to be good at yarn related crafts. I don't know, like I used to do the finger knitting scarves, if you ever remember those back in the day. But um, I really wanted to get into it as a way to like bond with my grandma and just have things to talk about her with. So, and just a way to keep our communication more open. Like we always had good communication, but I just thought it'd be a nice thing to just be able to check in and say, hey, look what I made this week or send her little things here and there. And I would always do that. But long story short, this is some of her stuff. Um, that my uncle's been keeping for me. And um, a lot of her stuff, unfortunately, I was not lucky enough to get, but that's a whole nother story for a whole nother day that we don't need to get into. I'll just be happy for what I got at this point. That was just something that was really special about our relationship. So I, like I said, I, I literally don't know what's in here knitting or crochet wise. Okay, <laughs> so we have some yarn. We have some old yarn that she used to buy, I guess. Some pink, a little bit of green, green here, and brown, some tan, <laughs> and white, I guess. I remember 
last time I saw her, her complaining about this white yarn because it was so scratchy and I told her which one to go to the store to get. So she must have used it, which is cute. These I actually made her my very first year of crocheting, these little flower fairies. She loved fairies and she used to always get me a fairy Christmas ornament every Christmas. So I made these for her one Christmas and that's all I have to say about them right now. <laughs> Um, but I don't know what I'll do with those. None of these are a set, but these are some vintage knitting needles. None that much, but hey, we'll take it. It's just cool because it's things that she had, you know, that's all I really care about. A pair of 10 millimeter by Lion Brand. These obviously aren't vintage, but all right. And then here we have a really old pattern that she must have printed out at some point and wrote all of her little notes on. This is a pattern actually for a blanket that she used to make for you when you would accomplish something. And so I think she started making them for her kids and then continued them for all of us grandkids. So I do have the blanket she made me, but this, this is the actual pattern. So probably I will frame this. Um, yeah, and just put it up somewhere in the craft room. Okay, anyway, the other stuff in here was like, personal stuff that's not crochet or knitting related. So sorry there wasn't a lot of real crochet and knitting stuff in here. That was just a couple little vintage things. I have a really, really cool vintage magazine she gave me that is a crochet and knit guide, I think for Christmas one year. Um, it's a Christmas magazine and it has some patterns in there and we're actually going to go through those um, come Christmas time. It's something I've just been excited about and honestly one of the reasons I started my YouTube channel was actually because I found this pattern in this crochet book and I thought this would be so cool to share with people like who are also into um, crocheting or knitting and especially into vintage kind of stuff. It's really cool to look back on what was like a popular pattern that year or something. So I'm really excited to look through that with you guys. And I'm, and I'm so glad that that's something she gave me when she was still here. So, okay. Anyway, sorry, that was just a couple little things. I'm probably gonna leave this clip in there anyway, just so you can kind of see what I got, what I'm talking about. But all right, with all that being said, I will catch you guys in the morning and uh, we'll get up to some more fun shenanigans. <laughs> Hi guys, so it is the next day and we have a couple of things left on our agenda for this week's vlog, but I thought since it's a very cloudy, overcast, gloomy day, you can probably tell I look a little bit pale. <laughs> um, it's just very dark outside today. But I thought it would be fun for us to do a test run of some pumpkins. I haven't made pumpkins in at least a year now. So I brought downstairs two different skeins of our Wool East Thick and Quick. I have Fisherman and then I brought down Spice as well. So I thought we would try making two different types of pumpkins. That way too, I can tell you the pattern in case next week you wanna follow along with me and crochet pumpkins while I'm crocheting pumpkins. So we're gonna do two test runs. Make sure we like them before we choose them for next week's project. I also, as you can see, I'm running super low. I know this doesn't look low, but I'm running super low on polyfill. So we are going to have to make a run to Joann's to pick some up. I did place a pickup order for that. And as you know, we're gonna use that $5 off 10 and go shopping in store, probably pick up another one of these or something. I really don't know yet. So we'll see when we get there. And what else did I wanna tell you? Oh yes, I have a tank top update. So I'm not going to be able to finish this tank top in this week's vlog because I went crazy on my pattern last night. It is, as of now, it's 18 pages long. If you've purchased a pattern from me before though, you know my patterns are super long, but it's only because I literally try to describe every single aspect of it in case you are newer to that type of crochet style. This one's gonna be tapestry. So there's a lot to explain in tapestry. And while I could just link my tapestry video I made, I still like to write things out because some people learn from reading it, some people learn visually. So I'm trying to have a little bit of everything in there. So it's 18 pages right now and there'll probably at least be one or two more pages added. I'm trying to condense, but it's hard. I don't wanna skimp on my instructions just to make it shorter. So anyway, that's the update with that. Hopefully that'll be out by next video. Fingers crossed for me. Let's hope I can get that all done. I'm proud of myself for getting as much as I got done yesterday. 18 pages was a lot of work. So anyways, but I wanted to show you, this is how far I am in the tank top. I just have this bottom portion here to work and then I just have to attach it. This is probably about, 
I would say maybe 20 rows or so left. And then, yeah, we just have to add the border around the neck part. Look how pretty the neckline is though. That looks really nice to me. Add some like little finishing touches around the armpits and stuff. And then that will be completely finished and ready to wear. Awesome, can't wait to show you that. Let's get right into working on our pumpkins really quick and then we will head out and run those couple little errands. I did bring down a couple hook sizes for these pumpkins. I have a 6.5 millimeter, which I think will probably be too small for what I'm using because I also glanced over at the pattern we're gonna be using and she's gonna be using a nine. I also brought down a 10 because I have tight tension. So just in case I wanna size up or something, we have that option. I don't wanna have to run back upstairs. <laughs> but we are going to be using Miss Cameron from Cameron's Cute Creations. I have made bobble stitch pumpkins in the past, but I cannot for the life of me find that pattern. And she does have a free version available on her website. So if you just head over to her website, Actually, I'll link it down below in case you just wanna get it from there. Super easy, and it looks like it's gonna work up fast. It's market prep friendly, and that's what we need. So I'm sure that's gonna be fantastic. She also has, I think, three different sizes for us we can choose from. Okay, yeah, so there are three different sizes for this bobble pumpkin. And then I was looking for a free version of the regular traditional style pumpkin I'm gonna use, not a bobble stitch version. I couldn't find a good, easy to read downloadable pattern for you guys for that one. I'm just browsing really quick on Pinterest. If I find one by next week, I'll link it. But for that, I just figure since she uses wool ease thick and quick, I'm just gonna go based off her measurements on this and then just make them without the bobble stitches. So essentially I haven't read hers over, but I'm just going to be chaining on my first row and then doing a half double crochet in the second row and then half double crocheting the rest of the way working in the back loop only, if that makes sense. So that's my heads up there, but I'm gonna work up one of these pumpkins and then we can look at it together, see if we like it. I'm sure they're gonna be great. I love camera and stuff. And then we will, like I said, head out. So let's uh, let's see what we can get. You know what's funny is I just went on YouTube to find like a cute, cozy little something fall to watch. And Cameron just posted her vlog of the week and she's making ghosts and doing market prep. So I guess we'll just hang out with her while we do this really fast and how appropriate we're working her pattern and we're gonna hang out so <laughs> okay let's see what happens Tell me I'm not the only one. I either have one darning needle or 75 and there's absolutely no in between. <laughs> we go don't mind the stems I need to put in way smaller cinnamon sticks these just happen to be the ones I brought downstairs but here's what we ended up with this is our little bobble stitch excuse me this is actually a popcorn stitch pumpkin so here's this one from Cameron's cute creations very cute love it and then this is just the one I just worked up really quick and all I did was like I said half double crochet through the back loop for 15 rounds and I made it 12 stitches wide, but I like them. I'm very pleased with this. I definitely won't make too, too many of these because they do eat up obviously a little bit more yarn, but they are kind of cute, huh? I know, I love them. I'm sorry if the sticks are throwing you off, they're throwing me off too, but okay. So these are the pumpkin patterns we're probably gonna use next week. Also need to take some pictures of Mr. Pumpkin Man, actually the one in the overalls too. We'll take them both with us. I wanna get some pictures while I'm out and about. I have this spot that I think is gonna be perfect for photos, especially my vintage inspired one. That's also why I'm wearing a black long sleeve because when I take pictures and I'm holding stuff, sometimes I feel like it's distracting when my bare arm is out. So I'm just wearing a black sleeve for that. 
It's hot and humid outside. It's all for the photos, right? So we'll go do that. And then that might be all we have time left for this week. My little SD card is showing that I only have 32 minutes left, which means I chatted a lot with you guys this week. So that'll be interesting to edit through. That is enough. I am going to go run those errands. So come on with me and let's go get those couple things done. really quickly while we're out we are right next to dollar tree the joann's so let's pop in there and see if i can find any halloween stuff to decorate my little filming space for you guys so we can have like a fun cozy little spot to crochet at every now and then for our videos <music> We are back home, so I thought I'd give you a quick speed haul. I didn't film in Joann's because I had this ridiculous box with me. So obviously I didn't have a free hand for filming, but I will show you what I ended up grabbing at the Dollar Tree. They didn't have a lot of like cutesy Halloween stuff there or any like fall things I really, really wanted. I got a couple of things for my market booth and that's kind of really about it. I also grabbed these two wooden dowels at Joann's and the only thing you missed was me grabbing Wool Ease Thick and Quick in black. So now we have a pure black one, which I think will be good for pumpkins next week too. So the only thing I got from the Dollar Tree was I grabbed this scarecrow and I think I'm just gonna set him on my market booth as like a little bit of decor. I usually put like one or two pieces out just to kind of add to my booth and make it look really cute. So that is my plan with that scarecrow. I got this, this creepy cloth just for my filming area. So I'm gonna put this up when I find some other stuff to hang as well. I grabbed two bags of these mushrooms. I'm thinking I can use these at my market too. Maybe string them together and drape them somewhere cute would be nice. I thought they were gonna be in the $3 section, but they're actually really nice. So happy with that. And what else do I have in here? I think just one other thing, yes. Okay, and then I did find these two. These are just called sweater pumpkin clips. So they look like this and they have this little clip on the back here. So I can clip them to my market price boards. I thought that'd be cute too. But we'll go through all of that when we do more market prep videos coming up. But that is all I got. And with that, I'm gonna close out this week's vlog. But thank you so much for taking some time out of your day and spending it with me today. I hope you enjoyed today's studio vlog. A little behind the scenes, a lot of pumpkin stuff, all of the good things. I really, really enjoyed you coming along with me. Make sure you like the video if you liked it, guys. Hit the subscribe button. If you're new here, I would love to have you be a part of my community. Comment down below a pumpkin emoji or anything you wanna talk about in the comments. I will of course be there chatting with you guys as I do. Uh, there is officially one month left of our, well, less than a month when you see this, of our community project. So if you wanna get in a square, a time's a ticking. We got a couple weeks left of that. And if you wanna support my channel further, my buy me a coffee link is in the description box as well. But other than that, guys, I hope you have a wonderful wonderful week this week and I will be seeing you next week. We are going to crank out some pumpkins together next week so I cannot wait for that and I hope you join me but until then have a wonderful week as always. Thank you so much for letting me take up a little bit of your time here on the internet today and I will be seeing you in my next one. Bye guys!